Okay, so short lesson. We've got lots of practice questions here you can try. Uh, one page 142, number 124, 5, 6, 7, 8, and number 10. Uh, eight's a little tricky, but I'd like you to try it. And 10 is a proof. So you're going to prove um, something using the properties of that. I believe there's a proof in two dimensions in the lesson notes before and this one is just asking you to extend it to three dimensions. So it'll be uh, interesting to try. One thing that you'll want to recognize is this. So for 1D, it doesn't give you the vectors in component form. It gives it to you like this. What I want you to recognize that that is just another way of writing the vector um, using the i's, j's, and k's. Remember that the i vector is the x part of the component. The j vector, j vector is the y part of the component, and the k vector is the zero part of the component. So this is just a fancy way of saying this. So don't get fooled with that. If you see 8i, it just means your x must be 8. And negative 5j must mean that your y must be negative 5. Um, don't get tripped up on this one. You'll see this. So I'll call this an aside. What if I said 8i uh, minus 5k? Well, as soon as you see the k, you realize that it goes i, j, k, and the k is the z um, axes, which means we're in three dimensions. So because we're in three dimensions, our component must have three parts to it. The 8 is the i. Since it's negative 5k, that must go in the z part. And since we don't see a j, we know that that's 0. We could write that on there and say 0j but it's not necessary. So when you see 8i minus 5k, then the component is 8, 0, negative 5. And sometimes they like to try and mess you up by putting the k's first, getting it all out of order. So just be careful that you match those up. So practice those questions, and we'll see you later.